I'm Mike Hanawald, field agronomist with Vex Hybrids, and here at our Ohio PFR site in London, Ohio today, and I uh, want to talk about corn pollination. Now, this corn has obviously finished pollinating, but right after pollination is a good time to uh, get out in the corn fields. We're checking for disease today. Um, that's a good time to scout for that, but also to evaluate how successful was pollination. We know that that's really important uh, to having growing a successful corn crop. So couple um, pieces of information about pollination in general. And I'm going to start with the tassels. So when you look at the tassels, um, I pulled one right here. Um, during pollination, you can actually tell how far through the pollination period you are based on where the anthers are open. Now, obviously, all the anthers have opened on this tassel. Um, but if it were the first day of pollination, we would expect the first anthers to open near the center of the main spike. And then as pollination progresses, day two and three, it will move throughout the entire length of the main spike. And then days four and five of pollination, the branches, the anthers on the branches will begin to open up and shed pollen. And so that's a great way to be able to uh, look, walk through a field and see how far through the pollination window that you actually, actually are. Um, silks work in a similar manner in that um, the silks actually begin, in the, begin to push from the lower part of the ear. About three to four rows from the base of the ear is where the first silks will push. And these silks push up to the tip and begin to, to push out. And so it'll start uh, three to four rows from the bottom and then work in both directions until the bottom is full and then fill out all the way to the top. So if you see pollination failure near the lower part of the ear, that would signal that you had some stress at the beginning of pollination, where if you have some pollination failure near the tip of the ear, that would signal stress towards the end of pollination. But hopefully we get that pollination all the way throughout the, the entire ear. Now, one thing I wanna point out here and uh, it might need to, to zoom in close here, but um, if you look at some of these silks, you'll see that while most of them are turning brown, there's a few white silks here uh, that are still hanging out. These silks did not pollinate and are still receptive. And so um, that would be most likely just near the tip of the ear, probably not that many kernels that we're missing out on. However, um, these are the silks that would tend to be problematic if we would have an infection of uh, gibberella um, ear mold, which could eventually lead to, to vomit toxin. So if the gibberella um, spores are present out here and we catch a rain to splash some water onto these receptive silks to get some of those gibberella spores onto the silks, those spores could potentially work their way down that silk and infect the tip of this, this ear. So just something to watch for. Just because we're seeing this doesn't mean that we're gonna have vomit toxin this fall, but that this is the time when we are susceptible to that infection. Now, to check and see how successful your pollination was, you simply um, pull the ear and we actually are going to husk it backward from the base of the ear because we don't want to disturb any of the silks. Easiest way to do that is to take your knife and just cut the base of the ear off and try and remove most of the husks um, here down at the base of the ear. You don't want to cut into the kernels, um, but you would just uh, take off the, the base of the ear like that. And then very carefully, peel off each layer of husk so as not to disturb the silks. Okay, so now we have that ear that we have husked back and left the silks intact. And you can see as I hold this that most of the silks are falling off. That's a good sign. Once the silk disconnects to the ear, it means that it has, has successfully pollinated. And so looking at this, you can see that most of that ear has, has pollinated most of the way to the tip, and uh, we just have that tip that did not pollinate. Now, you notice that I'm standing near the end of a plot here, and that we're seeing some a little bit of a, a lighter yellow to this corn. So th this is a little bit nitrogen deficient, not uncommon to see right at the end of the plot. We're just here for uh, video purposes. So um, when we have uh, nitrogen deficiencies, it's not at all uncommon to, to see a little bit of a tip back. Um, but when we get out in the plot a little bit further, um, we're going to, we, we're seeing better pollination than this, but that tells you that those are the kernels that have yet to pollinate. And so we're probably going to see um, some tip back in this ear. Last thing we can look at is, is watch the development. And so um, we are actually at the R2 growth stage. So R1 is silking. Um, then after we're finished with pollination, we move into the R2 growth stage, which is the blister stage. Uh, that you can see there looking at the ears, you can actually see the small blisters, they're the small dots um, that are at the points of each of the kernels. And then um, from there, we will progress to the milk stage. The milk stage 
is when it looks like a ripe ear of sweet corn at that point. Um, and so that would be the R3 growth stage is, is milk. Um, from tassel and silking at R1 until the milk stage at R3, that's our window for a fungicide application that if we see disease pressure at that point, we want to consider making a fungicide application to keep this crop as healthy as possible. So hopefully you found some helpful information here as you eval evaluate uh, the success of pollination. Um, it, you could certainly do some kernel counts and look at uh, yield estimate as far as your potential. But we still have a long ways to go um, in the growing season as far as determining yield potential, um, both in the number of kernels that we retain throughout the growing season, but also in kernel depth as we fill that out through the growing season as well. So if you have any questions about corn pollination or any other agronomic topic, feel free to reach out to myself or your local BEX representative and we'd be happy to help.